morning, I would invite you to turn your attention and open your Bibles to a portion of Scripture found in 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 1. Saul told his son Jonathan and all the attendants to kill David. But Jonathan had taken a great liking to David. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you once again for your tender mercies, your grace, and your love. Lord, we ask in these next few moments that you might allow us to both hear your word and to receive your word, but more importantly, becomes doers of your word. Lord, I pray uh, for each person under the sign of my voice on today. Lord, give us that which only you can, which is your continual grace and mercy, your peace and your love. And Lord, we ask as we have asked in so many times before, that you once again speak for your people are listening. I ask these things in your holy and righteous name. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. This morning I want to talk for just for a few moments from the subject, allies, adversaries, and one advocate. A few weeks ago I recall a story of a father who had become uh, criticized uh, for what he had done with regards to his daughter who was in school and those parents and even those uh, some teachers uh, were upset with this father because it seems that this father's daughter had a birthday party and she had taken as many of our children have done so many times before invitations to school and she passed out the invitations to her classmates and the reason why this father was being criticized was because there was one student in his daughter's class that did not receive an invitation and the parents of not only that child but even other parents said they thought that was somewhat unfair and even mean um, that this daughter this father would allow his daughter to invite all the other students except for this one student and when they Ask the father, why is it that you did not allow your daughter to invite this particular student? And the father said, the reason why we did not invite this one particular student is because this student had been bullying his daughter. And it seems to me that even at the young age of this young lady, she um, had experienced um, what it means to have an adversary, an enemy, a bully. Um, even at the times in which she lived. And I must admit, even in my own life, I can look back over it and, and, and remember those moments in which I had to deal with my bullies. For all of us had neighborhood bullies. And, and let me remind you that the neighborhood bullies that we had growing up were not cyber stalkers. They, were not, they did not troll us online. But we had bullies that would ask you to meet them um, after school at 3 o'clock. And they were bullies that did not um, bully you online, but they bullied you with, with right crosses and punches to the face. And, and it seems that even when we grew up, we had to somehow figure out how to deal with our adversaries. And life has a way of, of bringing about adversarial situations. Life has a way of creating adversaries. But the good news is that as, as, as much as life um, has a way of creating adversaries. Life also has a way of creating allies. And allies were our friends, and many of us grew up with friends who were there with us growing up there to support us. And, and in the midst of, of um, those, those adversaries, those enemies, those bullies that we had, we also had uh, friends which were allies. But those of us that were raised in the church knew that not only life would bring about a certain number of allies, it also brought about a certain number of ad adversaries. But most importantly, we learned uh, that there was but one advocate. And I wanted to talk to you this morning about what it means to have allies and what it means to have adversaries, but most importantly, what it means to have yet one advocate. And, and life has a way sometimes of, of changing over time. And, and for those of you who experience uh, what it means to have both allies and adversaries, you can attest to the fact that sometimes your adversaries 
eventually become your allies and some of your allies each eventually become your adversaries and so they were interchangeable at times and so we had to learn how to appreciate our allies but also deal with our, our adversaries and so in the text we discover um, that David um, has to deal not only with his adversarial relationship with Saul he is blessed by God to have an ally in Jonathan. And Jonathan, for those of you who are not aware, was the son of Saul, and, and he was one who was heir to the throne. But yet, as, in spite of the fact that he was King Saul's son, and in spite of the fact that he was heir to the throne, he was also David's friend, and he was also David's ally. And Jonathan was placed in a situation in which he had to choose between his loyalty to his father and his friendship with David. And God has a way of putting people in your lives in order to help you deal with the tragedies of life. And David, many of you certainly are aware, was an individual who was anointed by God. And David was anointed in private, but he is experiencing a public persecution. That persecution came in the form of Saul who set out to kill David as a result of jealousy and, and what the, the gospel writer um, considers to be an evil spirit. And, and though it is not clear um, the, the origin of this evil spirit that the Bible talks about, but, but I would suggest to us that the reason why um, they describe it in the way in which they did, because it was simply an unknown um, behavior that Saul exhibited. And I stop by here to encourage you and to remind you that, that you ought not be too concerned about why folk don't like you. You ought not be too concerned about why people decide to be your adversary because sometimes they don't know. There are times in which they really don't know why they don't be like your adversary. It could be that the reason why you have an adversary is because of the allies that you have in your life. And so instead of worrying about why folk don't like you, instead of worrying about why you have so many whom you think our adversaries appreciate those allies that God and even appreciate those adversaries because those adversaries were used by God in the case of David in order to prepare David. You see, David was anointed by God, but God did not immediately put David on the throne. And the reason why I believe he did not immediately put David on the throne because he needed, David needed time in order to prepare to be king. Simply anointing him was the beginning, but he needed some experiences to know how to deal um, with the people as a king. And, and the best way to learn is through life experiences. And so as God took David through his various perils in life, he was preparing David to know because David would have to face not only uh, deal with allies, but David would also have to deal with the adversaries as king. And so David, in this preparatory time in his life um, dealt with this situation found um, in this text. And so we see the need to have both allies and also how to deal with our adversaries. And how then do we deal with our adversaries? Well, David dealt with his adversaries by simply following God because David understood that this this adversarial encounter he had with Saul was not simply that of a king against his main warrior. David understood that their warfare that was engaged was not warfare of flesh and blood, but it was of flesh, spirit, principalities. And so David realized that, that the way in which he responded to his adversaries was to draw closer to God. And that is the way we ought to deal with our adversaries, not directly toward them or repeat, do those things toward them that they do to us sometime, but recognize that we are to use those moments in life that are difficult as a way to draw us closer to God. Well, maybe this morning you're saying, I really hadn't had a whole lot of these adversaries that you're talking about this morning. Well, adversaries are not always people. Situations can become adversarial. Health, the loss of health, uh, the loss of a job, uh, the, 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 the breaking up of a relationship can be difficult. It can create these adversarial situations. And how then do we deal with them? It is clear, at least to me, 
on how we are to do that and realize that there are moments in which we have to face that are difficult in time. And also there are moments in life that God will put those people around us to help us through those situations. And so God places Jonathan in a situation in which Jonathan is able to not only help David, but to protect David. But David uh, knows that Saul, that, that Jonathan has put himself even in peril or at great risk because David uh, knows that uh, Jonathan is heir to the throne and he's heir to a throne that David will not sit on. And he, it could have easily been the situation in which Jonathan also became angry or sought out to harm David because Jonathan would have seen his own situation having changed as a result of the anointing of David. But somewhere along the line, the relationship was developed as a result of God's hand to help Jonathan to understand that, that God is in control. And, and even though the tradition of this hierarchy a monarchy that is found is what typically happens. God is doing something very different in these moments. And so Jonathan is led not by his own personal interest. Jonathan is not led by his loyalty to his father. Jonathan is led by God. And so too is David led by God. And they realize that it is not always about them, but it is about what God is doing. And oftentimes life is just like that. Life is not just seen from the eyes and the perspective of our own situation, but we must understand that God is in the midst of all this and God is, has a plan and oftentimes it is described as a greater plan and that greater plan takes place in the midst of God and we are part of that greater plan and oftentimes we lose sight of the bigger plan that God has for us just because we find ourselves in difficult situations. Yes, it would have been easier for David simply to take the throne the same day in which he was anointed. But that was not God's plan. And though David did not understand fully what God's plan was, he trusted God. And he knew that in spite of his enemies, God was still on the throne. In spite of the, that which he had to go through in order to reach the throne, that God had anointed him. And that anointing was that which would take him through. And those of us who desire to live and to be under the anointing of God must also recognize that there's some difficulties when it comes to that anointing that everybody will not be happy at the fact when God anoints you and when God appoints you to a position in life. Don't think everybody's going to be in line to be on your side. There's some folk that are lining up to be your ally, yes, but just know there's also some folk that will be lining up to be your adversary as well. And so don't get too concerned about the, the adversaries of life and, and don't get too puffed up about the number of allies that you have. Focus in on the what is pure and what is real, and that is the advocate. And the, well, you're wondering, well, who, who is the advocate? Well, if you don't know, let me share with you who the one advocate is. The one advocate is Jesus. He is an advocate. He, he advocates for us. He advocated for us from the time in which he entered into the world. He advocated for us even in the beginning of time. For John says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And so we understand that, yes, we must deal with our adversaries and, yes, we must learn how to appreciate and understand our allies. But most importantly, we must acknowledge the one advocate. Well, I guess you're wondering uh, what happened to the, to the little girl in the story in which I shared with you. Well, I'm not quite sure how it turned out. I don't know if the, the father conceded and allowed that bully to go to his daughter's uh, birthday party. I suspect not, but whatever the case, let me remind you uh, of not just who that father was in that story, but what that father represents. Uh, that father understood that, that there was a celebration that was going on and he worked to have a celebration in the form of a birthday party and he advocated for his daughter uh, to, to be a part of that birthday party. At the same time, he, he, he helped her to celebrate that party even in the presence of that bully. And I serve a father that will bless us 
in the and bless us in a way where it is done in the presence of our enemy. Well, there's another party that would take place, another celebration that would take place, and and those who are how the children and the sons and daughters of God will be a part of that, and they will be blessed even in the presence of our enemies. For the Bible declares that he will prepare a table in the presence of our enemies and though we will have a celebration somewhere along the way our enemies will see how we are blessed. So don't worry about how to deal with your adversaries. God is already taking care of your adversaries. God has already dealt with that. He does it in a way not the way you would do it because many of us would simply say, God, why don't you just get rid of all my enemies, but that's not how God operates. God operates in a very different manner. God says, listen, I'm a big enough God that I can bless you with enemies in your presence as well as without in your presence. So don't get caught up on the blessings. Your blessings are not predicated by your enemies. Your blessings are predicated by God. And that is why we have but one advocate. And he advocates for us, not because we are innocent not because we have not sinned but he advocates for us for the forgiveness of our sins and so all of us will need an advocate when it comes to the father can I tell you one story before I end on this morning I've said it many times before you've all probably heard it when I talked years ago when I was very young and inexperienced I'm on my way traveling back and forth I got what I believe to be my very first speeding ticket and I got that speeding ticket and I tell you that that I, I was young back then I didn't really didn't know what to do or how to pay it I didn't even ask the officer I simply took the speeding ticket and, and put it in the glove box and and a few days later I went back and looked at it and on it was a court day and so me not being naive not really knowing what to do I simply showed up in court on that court date and waited for my name to be called and when my name was called I stood before that judge and that judge looked at me for a few moments and said where is your lawyer I said I don't have a lawyer he said we're gonna postpone this this uh, date and miss by the way don't ever come before me again without a lawyer and I've, I've to this day I still remember that because some of us will make that same mistake because he understood, though I did not, that I could not advocate for myself. I needed an experienced advocate, advocate. And that experienced advocate would stand on my behalf, not because I was innocent, but because I was guilty. Yes, I confess that I was not doing the speed limit. Hey, listen, don't judge me this morning. Um, I don't speed anymore. The things I used to do, I don't do no more. And as, as it is said, uh, I, I'm, thank God I'm not, I don't do the things I used to do, but I'm glad I'm not who I used to be. And so in the midst of where I find myself, all of us need that one advocate in our life. All of us need an advocate to stand before us to that one day when we will stand before the judgment seat of God because many of us uh, will not always uh, make the right turns in life. Many of us will not always make the right mistakes. David understood that that part of his anointing, part of his, his divine plan uh, that God has put in place uh, resulted in him being king, not for himself, but in order for the people that they might have a godly king. And, and God uh, puts friends in our lives in order that we might treat others friendly. God puts adversaries in our lives in order to teach us to be appreciative of those good things in life. And so our lives are filled with both allies and advocate, adversaries. But most importantly, our life must be filled with an advocate. We must understand that we must all acknowledge that Jesus advocates on our behalf. He advocates because he will stand um, on our behalf and he will tell his father whether or not he knows us. And if he does know us as a result of our asking uh, God to save us, um, we, he will allow us to enter into that new Jerusalem on somewhere on the other side of Jordan. And so I'm glad this morning that I have an advocate, not just for that great getting up judgment day, but even on today when those around me seek to harm me. I've got an advocate. When those around me seek to, to scandalize my name, I've got an advocate. I've, all I've got to do is to stand still and let God fight my battles for he is my advocate. And guess what? 
He is your advocate as well. So let us, uh, on today, uh, thank God uh, for sending us an advocate. He advocated not only for us on today, but way back on Calvary's cross. He hung on that rugged cross. And as a result of him hanging on that rugged cross and dying and being placed in that bar tomb, uh, it's good to know that he didn't stay there. But somebody said sometime on that third day, he got up with all power and he lived and he ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of the Father. But don't forget this, he's coming back real soon. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your tender mercies. But we thank you for our time together on today. Lord, we, uh, we, we count all that we experience as joy. Lord, we are appreciative of those friends that you send our way. But we're also mindful of those adversaries that we encounter in life. So Lord, help us to learn how to appreciate our friends and at the same time deal with our enemies and also deal with the adversarial experiences of life. But Lord, most importantly, let us always be mindful of that one advocate that you have sent to us who died on a rugged cross, who shed his blood that we who are sinners might live. And we thank you on today. And we ask that you will continuously bless us, keep us in all the days to come. Amen.